Hey guys, and welcome back to Building Habits. In case you're new here, this is a series where I introduce a set of rules you should try and follow in every game you play. The goal is to teach you strong fundamental principles that we will improve upon as we go. This series is my personal take on how to improve in chess, starting from 400 ELO all the way up to 2000 ELO and beyond. I'm gonna choose a series of rules that I have to follow what you might notice is that you will miss chances to play winning moves. That's okay. The goal here is to focus on the fundamentals and I'm trying to get you guys to build good habits and play high percentage moves that will help you increase your rating. Okay, this guy's almost a 600. This is a serious game here. This is a serious game here. Possible to never lose? <laughs> Unlikely. Unlikely. Let's go for this knight. And let's go for this knight. Remember, even if I go here and this pawn is hanging, what I've been doing in general is not taking it right away. And the reason is like, let's say in this case, if I took this pawn, he might go queen here or take here, or I would get into a position which is not like any of the other positions I get into. So I'm really just trying to keep things you know, close level. I'm going to put my bishop here. You guys know that. I'm going to castle. I'm going to play d6. I'd rather you guys get that good fundamental position than try to be fancy and like take a pawn on move two or anything like that. d4. How many times has this, has this happened? A lot. What do I do every single time? I take with my knight. Pawn here next. Okay, that's technically a capture. We're going to take that. Okay, now this is kind of a unique position. Um, my piece is hanging, but I decided to take because it's a capture and it's easy to, to overlook this, this tactic. Tactic's called removing the defender. So F4 is kind of like a decoy. It's a decoy tactic. If you take it, you're actually undefending something over here. So I blundered that for a temporary move. Now I'm gonna bring my knight back. As soon as it's attacked, I should bring it back. E5. Now. Rook here would be a great move, pinning it. Knight e4, knight there, not possible. These moves not possible. I only have one square to put it on. It's gotta be this. It just has to be. Have I been to Germany? I definitely have. You've been browsing tutors and <laughs> very clear? What well, I don't know what very clear is. Am I very clear? Are my moves very clear? Either way, it sounds like a compliment. Thank you. Okay, let's go d6. I mean Basically, at this point, I want to get my, my bishop out. I want to get my knight back here. I'm going to play d6. And how many times have you guys seen at this elo when there is a queen on this square or this square? It's probably a 95% chance that you win it with the bishop. Am I right? <laughs> That's it. We've had our first mouse slip. We've had our first mouse slip. I didn't put any rules about mouse slipping. So I guess you're definitely allowed to mouse slip at all levels. Oof. Moment of silence for, uh, for that bishop. He didn't deserve that. He had a whole future ahead of him on g4. By the way, this is like some bug or something. Yeah, I was going to say, why is that square highlighted? Chess.com is trolling me. Why is G4 highlighted? It's been highlighted the whole time. Chess.com is like, hey, remember that square you tried to go to? <laughs> Sucker. Okay, I'm going to take this pawn in the middle. Resign. No, never resign. Never resign. Oh, Bishop here. Oh, he's just styling on me at this point. He's just styling on me at this point. He's like, all right, this guy plays bishop e5. This guy is literal trash at chess. We can just mate him in two. We can mate him in two. Well, remember, I have to first bring my knight back to the center. Okay. 
Okay, we're gonna develop a uh, rook check. Knight f6 was a little uh, little monk w for a few seconds there, but he didn't play it. Um, so rook e8. Next, we're we're gonna go. Generally, if I have choice between these two moves, I usually choose the one that doesn't trade the queen. So I'm gonna go here. Um, castles. Let's bring the rook over. Okay, so this is a trade, so I'm going to do it. It's a trade. Um, and remember, if he takes, then we just take back. That's not only a free piece, but it was part of our trade. So we're going to take that back, and um, we're right back in this game. Right back in this game. The rooks look beautiful, by the way. The rooks look beautiful. Every piece is developed. So now I'm going to make sure to play my escape square, h6. Knight h5, that's a trade. Remember, even when something goes wrong, <laughs> even when you're incapable of taking a free queen in one move, you can still remember the fundamentals. And I've been following them ever since, and, and now I've got the game back to at least a reasonable position. Okay, so he's checked me just like last time, and now he plays this move. That's insane! Wow! He's stopping me from running away instead of checking me. That's an insane move. Holy smokes! Wow! What a, that's a great move by my opponent. A great, great move. He's cutting me off. Now, here, I might get lucky, I might not. But a great, reasonable move is bring this knight, which is doing nothing on the side of the board, back into the game. We always want to have our pieces controlling as much of the center as possible. He's going to check me. I don't have any squares with my king. I have to play this. And now it's up to him. Now it's up to him. Um, but he's been playing a great game so far. Uh, Rook cutting me off and Bishop there. Just a beautiful move. Beautiful move. Again, I have ways out of this, but <laughs> it'll take me a while to find them. Now, a check. can always throw a check in. That makes a lot of sense. Um, but the point is, he's starting to take this, and that is checkmate in one, because the rook is covering those squares. So let's just throw a check. Let's just see, see what he's up to. Throw a check in there. The funny thing about this move is that it traps his queen in the corner, but it's actually, it's actually good. King f1, and not king there, is another great move. If I go here to check, there's going to be c4, but knight e7, difficult move to find, retreating move. I think he's played a good game. Definitely deserves to get this win. Um, let's give him another check. At this point, we're getting mated in one. I'm just gonna check him until I can't check him anymore. Check, 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 check. Check. We're just gonna check him pretty much anywhere we can. Oh, and we had mated in one at the end. Checkmate. Down on time, though. Very deserved, in my opinion. A game where you mess up like that, I think you're going to take an L. I think you're going to take an L. He played really well, though. Like, credit to this guy. Rook E1 um, from F1 that he played. This move is so good. So good. It really is. It's so important to cut the king off before he runs away, rather than just check him and have the guy sprinting. Like, you remember the last game I played, um, that the king was on the run. Right? So it, it really is important to cut the king off. This is like truly just a very, very good move. It is. Holy cow, some gifted subs from Donnie Tsunami GG. Donnie, tan gifted for the mouse slip. Oh, it's tan gifted for a mouse slip, Donnie? Uh, Donnie, I, I don't know if you noticed, but. Um, here, I played knight c6. I actually meant to play knight e6. That was a mouse slip. Um, I actually meant to play knight d5 here. There's another mouse, mouse slip as well. Uh, this was supposed to be d5. Mouse slipped that as well. Uh, this was a mouse slip for bishop g4. So I actually mouse slipped uh, quite, quite a lot in, in this game. I'm just reviewing it um, on second thought here. That I was trying to rook a lot of mouse slips. What can I say, uh, Donnie? Very, very uh, kind donation there. But just want to let you know uh, there were quite a few mouse slips in that game so in case you wanted to just adjust the you know the overall value at any time anytime 
Yeah, that'll be a thousand subs, please. <laughs> Naprosto, 5,000 bits. He's coming in with the mouse slip fund as well. Donnie Tsunami, 10 more gifted subs. It worked. I'm literally scamming. Donnie Tsunami. Holy cow. What big support. Donnie, 10 more. He knew there was another mouse slip in there. Yeah, yeah, he, he knew there was one more in there. He knows that honest guy like me wouldn't make something like that up. You know, I would never do that. He, there must have been another mouse slip in there somewhere. 10 more subs from Donnie Tsunami. Thanks a lot, Donnie. Big thank yous, guys, to Donnie. If anyone just got a sub from Donnie Tsunami, make sure to say thank you. Neprosto, 5,000 bits for the mouse slip. $50 in there from Neprosto. Cheers to you both. Big support. And hope you guys are, are enjoying the series, but also learning something from it in all seriousness. Um, but thanks for the support. Donnie, Neprosto, as always, those guys are big, big supporters of the channel. Um, Lion Pride came in with a brand new sub. Tungdal93 with five months. Ninjak with the prime. Bogus Rogus, 22 months. It says, by GM, not GME. Yes. By, by the GM title, not GME. Yeah, it'll get you further in life. Gigahertz with two months. Prague with eight months. And another clever name. Thank you, the Fresh Prime. Welcome, everybody. Um, okay, let's see. Let's get a few more games. Let's get a few more games. I'm going to jump back in here. That was a rough one, though. That was a rough one, guys. Let's see if we can make up for it. Knight c3. So I've always said, you know, if he moves this knight, we play this pawn in the center. Moves this knight, we play the other pawn. Now, he's moved this knight. We want to move this knight. The opposite. So e4 squared, d5 squared, those are in the center, controlled by his knight on c3. We want to match that with knight f6. Uh, knight there. We want to always move the opposite knight. So now we're controlling e5 and d4, so knight c6. He goes here, and we always know we play a6. He goes back. Wow. Holy cow. The fact that we have people um, playing bishop back now is just incredible. It's just incredible. All right, d3. I'm going to castle. Castle ASAP. Bishop there. You guys know what we're supposed to do. h6. And bishop back. Look at this guy. I hope you guys can really appreciate the difference in levels and how adding a small thing to your arsenal, like not taking the knight right away, like it's incredible. But I hope you guys realize it's a much better player that I'm facing than the guy who's going to take both of these knights. It just is. So I hope you guys are noticing that. That's a, that's a very small thing to add to your game. If you're the type of guy who just pins and takes, just try going back. If the guy goes g5, he's really going to be weakening his position. I know. Peace is going backwards. Imagine. Imagine. So, in this position, I'm going to play d6. I'm going to play d6. I'm going to guard that pawn. Castle. Let's put our bishop here. True RV404. True. He does have numbers in his name. Queen d2. I think he's been watching my series. <laughs> Let's go rookie eight. <laughs> rookie one. He's putting together a pretty good game here. Now, instead of queen d7, I'm going to choose to go to e7. And the reason why I'll explain is I do not want to double my pawns. So I'm going here so that I can take back with the queen. And then I'll bring the rook over. Nice to see the flames winning. There we go. Some offense from the guys. Okay, so what's our next move? Rook d8. Most likely, we've already got our escape square. Let's go for rook d8. And now we're all ready. So now we're probably going to toss some pawns up here. Uh, he attacks us. We're going to go back. This is the square that we always go to if a b pawn attacks us. b3 or b6. What's the Flames? Calgary Flames. Hockey team. Hockey team. Just a Canadian thing, buddy. Okay, he goes here, and every time, what have I done? I've done knight d4. Here, we actually have something uh, different at play, which is that um, the bishop is pinning our knight to the rook. Now, do I know what a pin is? No. But what I can see is that if I do this, his bishop's going to take my rook, the bishop for the rook is not a trade that I want to allow. Now, it's quite possible I might blunder this. Play knight d4. I don't think knight d4 is a bad move. But for the purposes here, I'm going to play pawn takes because in this position, 
it's the move that doesn't blunder, uh, doesn't blunder material. Okay, we take. He moves the knight back. Let's get one of our random pawn moves in here. Okay, he takes, and basically every time that it's been taken, I've always taken back with the bishop. Um, it's just kind of fortunate here. Toss a pawn to Yoramon. There we go. We need more of that. Toss a coin to your hand bow. Uh, that's a capture. I'm going to go for it. If he takes back, I am going to take again because it's another capture. Is this the same guide as day one? Yes, it is. Exact same as day one. Okay. Um, now we need a move. We need a move. I think rook here is not unreasonable. Hits the bishop, actually does something. Also, another random pawn move, and it is in the center. I think this move makes some sense as well. I'm really... I've got this covered, you know, with everything. Glad to hear that, uh, Donnie Tsunami. And there's going to be more to this. So, you know, if you're liking some of the fundamentals that you're learning here, I mean, there's going to be more levels to this stuff. We're going to be adding on important things. And I think probably the next session is where it's going to apply to the majority of people the most. Most people... I feel like are kind of between the 800 to like 1200 range. So the next uh, set of rules might be the, you know, the, the most applicable. Um, let's double the rooks maybe. But for now, uh, you know, I, I know there's some people getting into chess as a result of COVID, Queen's Gambit, online streaming, whatever it might be. Um, so in case that's you, hopefully this is useful and on top of that um hopefully the uh the guys who are better than than this level and maybe don't need this type of advice still find it either entertaining or a good refresher on some of the fundamentals that you should be remembering and using in all your games uh, let's take that this is in the center so i brought my knight to the middle here i've got my two rooks rook takes d4 uh, i am actually forking these bishops but that's more a product of of me just playing in the center if he takes here i'm going to probably play queen here again st staying in the center let's see what he wants to do so I just played queen d6 um, he took my pawn, so I'm actually down a pawn here. What he should do is he should take and then move this bishop because I'm threatening two bishops right now and I'm going to have to take a free piece. That is an offering for me. And if he's not careful, guys, we can see that maiden one is possible and when it rains, it pours. Sometimes you drop a piece, all of a sudden you drop everything. So he should play something like this. That would definitely be a good move. h3, g3, all good moves. He plays a really good one, g3. I'm going to bring my rook back to that central square. Nice and safe. Everything protecting everything on the d file. I think five minutes is decent. When you're starting up, rapid is probably good. So like 10 minutes or 15 minutes um, is good to start off with. Uh, I've explained I'm playing five minutes because if I do any longer, I won't get to play as many games. And it's nice to get a lot of games. But if I go any shorter, like three minutes, it could be a little too quick. I won't have time to explain everything. So that's why I'm choosing the, the time limit that I'm playing at. Um, okay, I'm gonna, just going to put my queen in the center. Okay, he's actually given up a piece here. Um, so I am going to have to take that. And again, these are going to be the hardest things for you guys to execute if you're following these rules, is knowing when there's a free piece and actually taking it. Of course, you're you're not going to do it with 100% accuracy like me, or should I say 99% accuracy now that I missed a free queen last game, but you get the idea. You're not going to be able to do it every single time, but do it to the best of your ability. That's the point. Do it as many times as you can. Okay, rook to a1. Um, I'm going to bring my bishop back to the, the middle here, just back to safety, basically. 
Um, rook there, I mean, there's, again, lots of, like, moves that could be considered by black here. Um, rook here looks like a good one. Number one, it's a check. And number two, it trades pieces. And trading pieces is exactly what you want to do. King up. I um, think a knight into the middle of the board is not crazy. Knight in the middle looks good. Okay, king f3. Again, my knight's getting hit here. It's actually kind of awkward. Um, I think I might bring my rook in to defend it. Otherwise, I think I'm considering just moving it back. Just moving it back. Okay, I'm going to bring my rook over here. Uh, I have to commit one of these pieces to stopping this pawn. Like, I, if I don't do that, I, I don't really have anything to do. Um, and let's bring our king out. We said in the end game, you want to bring the king out. It's exactly what we're going to try to do. I'm actually cut off here. So I'm gonna, gonna bring my king out like this, and I'm just gonna try to walk over and take his pawn. That's my plan. But yeah, following that rule that we all know, which is like basically wanna bring my king into the action and attack his pawns, and that's exactly what I'm doing. King into the action, attacking his pawns. I've taken his pawn. Okay, let's Bring the knight. Still controlling center squares. All about those. Oh, he's just giving up a free rook. That's... I gotta take that. Okay, let's basically use the king here. And you see how my king is just basically taking all... Like, that's all, all I've been doing is using the king. Whenever you have a pass spawn, you just go. You just go, you just go, go, go. Pass spawn. So, again, in that end game, I don't think I did anything extravagant. Like, literally, the only moves I did at some point was I brought my king and I just took pawns and I ran like all the way over here, took all his pawns, moved out of the way. And as soon as you have a pass pawn, send it all the way up the board. Send it all the way up the board. So my main point is that it might not always go this well for you and you might even lose. But what I'm saying is that if you get in an end game in the 500 range, uh, yellow range, use your king a lot because your opponent probably won't be using his king as much as he should and it'll probably pay off for you more than more than more often than not so lots of king moves in the end game is very important what are the best settings to start playing with as a new player uh well if you're following my rules pre moves off always promote to queen off confirm resign maybe on so that if you accidentally press resign, you never <laughs> you never say yes. Never resign. Um, multiple games, you probably want to turn that on. And it's a premium only function. So if you want to turn it on, you're going to have to um, actually pay for it. And so if you pay for it, you're going to obviously go in the chess bra chat, type in exclamation mark premium, and make sure you sign up for a premium membership using the chess bra link, so our affiliate link. So you definitely want to uh, have that one checked on. So definitely yes to that one. Um, and yeah, those look like the best best settings to, to start out. Multiple games means that you can play two games at once. And if you're not a premium member on chess.com, you can't do that. So it's like if you're playing a long 15 minute game, you can play another 15 minute game. You can play two bullet games at once. You can play two games at the same time. And uh, is that a good idea for beginners? Absolutely, really good idea. And make sure you sign up for premium using the chess bra link. Okay, let's get a couple more games in for today's session. Um, again, I think I'm gonna do the same thing as last time. We're gonna see if we can hit 550 and if we lose that might be our last game so we'll see we'll see if we can get it all right d4 you know what we're going to do we're going to do d5 this knight comes out we're going to move the other knight so the knight c3 covers e4 and d5 knight f6 covers them right back okay bishop there you guys know we're going to play this we're going to play h6 so bishop takes we're always going to take towards the center that's our main rule so anything on the right side of the board takes towards the center. Anything on the left side takes towards the center as well. That's the idea. Pawn e4, that's a capture. That is a capture. Bring our knight out. Um, 
guess we want to get our bishop out, play e6, get this bishop out as well. Okay, he's gone there. Um, let's bring our bishop to the square that we, we put it on pretty much every time. And that's a capture, that's an exchange, that's a trade. So we're going to execute that. And we're going to play this. We can bring our bishop, again, controlling the center. So our idea is bishop d6. The idea is bishop d6. Okay, and he's done this. That is going to be an immediate trade. And by way of doing this, our opponent has actually created a position where we have double isolated pawns. So he's playing pretty well so far. Bishop takes. Um, I think we're going to go here. It's our usual square. Um, hit the center. Probably going to go uh, our queen up and look to get castle. Now, he's actually checked us. And the interesting thing about this is that if we use one of the pieces to block, we're going to be moving them again. And our king generally doesn't want to move. So queen e7 is not crazy at all. Queen e7 is not crazy at all. I'm going to block that check. Yeah, exclamation mark habits info is just the, the full rule list. Okay, that's a trade. We're going to take that back. The full rule list of every all the rules that I'm following for this. Thanks to Weirdog for the 11 months. And thanks for the feedback too. I definitely read most of it and hopefully am implementing some of it today. Okay, um, it doesn't matter, but where we put our king, first things first, uh, we have a trade on the board, so we're going to take that trade. Now, what do we do with our king? I think that we definitely are still going to castle here. Um, of all the things that I could do with my king, unfortunately, this is the most natural. Because while one of these moves might be good, why would I ever do that when I could castle? I'm at the 400 elo range. You're not focused on you know making the right type of king move in the end game. You're focused on getting castled. So finally, I can castle. I'm going to pick king side because generally, if, if I'm in a castle, I am going to probably pick king side. It's the more common destination for me. Here, he goes knight to d4. Again, pawn hanging, but I'm going to follow more of the fundamentals. Just going to go rook to e8, and after he takes, can I go rook d8? I cannot. I cannot go rook d8. So I can't do that, but otherwise I've sort of finished my development. Let's go for a few random pawn moves. What would I call this pawn structure? <laughs> the worst one ever. All right, let's take that. Let's go for another pawn move over here. And um, what you guys are going to notice is that we're in the end game, and I'm, I need to start using my king here, if I can, if I can use my king. So let's see what I can do with my king, because it's not looking good. Um, I'm going to well, bring my king to the center here. OK, he's going rook e3. He's attacking my pawn. Kind of annoying, kind of annoying. Um, let's go king here to defend it. Okay, he goes a3. I'm going to bring my rook to the center. That move makes a lot of sense to me. Move makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I can't play bishop f4 there. Okay, king up. I um, don't think giving a check is too crazy here. He brings the king up. Now, I think I'm going to take this pawn. I think I'm going to take this pawn. So what have I done the last couple moves? They've been a little bit quick. So once he makes a move, I'm just going to go back a couple moves and sort of reiterate. But um, the reason they've been so quick is that they've all been, been following some of the rules. They've all been definitely following the rules about the center. As soon as it's an end game, I tried to get my king involved. I tried to bring my king to the center. But he attacked my pawn, and I put my king here to defend it. Now, he hasn't done anything since then. He's actually doing a good job using his king. So I think he's doing really well here. Um, as for me, I had my rook in the corner. I finally got to bring it to the center. I gave a check, and he happened to give me a pawn, so I took it. So that's that's all that happened. Now, as for this pawn, that guy's also hanging. Using my bishop, which I haven't got a chance to use at all so far. Bishop takes a3. There's nothing that I need to be worried about. If you look at his knight, it hasn't moved in probably 10 moves. He played knight there, and then he never moved it again. He never moved it again. So anytime that you're in an endgame, I say use your king as much as possible. In this particular game, he found a weird way to tie my king down, which is the only reason my king isn't like out here right now. Other than that, 
you just want to attack pawns. And you see that in the in the on the screen right now, building habits, the last one, rule number, let's call it five, because it's on the screen there, but uh, attack pawns. So you want to move your, your king as much as possible, but you also want to attack pawns. And I brought my rook down, attacked this pawn to b2, took it. My bishop took this pawn. Now, taking all these pawns, I think is just a great, great strategy. The other strategy that I've told you guys in an endgame, which is really simple, really simple, but easy to follow, is if you ever have a pass pawn, just push it as far as it can go. So this pawn is a pass pawn. So moving this bishop out of the way, and then just pushing this pawn as far as it can go, I think that's also a really, really good idea. So two good ideas, both of which I think are quite possible to, to do at a, a 400 level. All you do is either push the pawn or go and take and attack your opponent's pawns. Those are two like simple plans to go for in an endgame. So I'm going to choose the pawn taking one. I'm just going to take literally all his pawns. That's my goal. He's attacking my bishop. I'm going to try not to blunder that. I'm going to go back and attack a central square. So in this particular game, I'm going to choose the, the take all his pawns method. So I took <laughs> literally every pawn I could. And, and now I have a pawn here that I could start pushing. So let's go. Let's start pushing it. Let's start pushing it. See what happens. Back over here, I decided to take pawns instead of pushing it. Now I'm just going to push pawns, and we'll see what happens. Okay, knight here. Remember, king in an endgame, activation. Activation, which means I'm not going to go back here. I'm going to go up here. I need to activate my king. I want it to be part of the position. The king is an attacking piece. The king is relevant. I, I need to, to get up and help. Okay, takes my, my bishop. I'm going to take back, of course. Rook down, I'm going to keep pushing it. So all the only thing I know about this endgame right now is I want to push my pawn as much as I can, and I want to get like run around with my king as much as I can. Okay, in order to push my pawn more, I am probably going to move it. Let's say we give a check. Attacking the central squares as well, doesn't hurt. Let's push that pawn. Okay, now he stopped my pawn from pushing. I think it's time to use my king. Pushing this pawn will also be a very good idea. But although this might look advanced, and I think that the way I've played this endgame is really, really good so far, but I don't think that I've used any advanced techniques. Really, all that I've done is like take pawns like all the time, attack and take pawns, push past pawns, and activate the king. And at a, at a very basic level, I think those are good guidelines to have. I think those are good guidelines to have. So we're basically bringing our king up to help. Our king's an attacking piece, and we should use it. OK, that's a capture, so we're going to take it. And we're going to continue our mission of like going over here, basically. Push him, baby. <laughs> push him if we can. We want to take back, so the idea is we just basically pushed our pawn all the way. And finally, we're able to take his rook. Now we have another thing to push. We have another thing to push. And there's nothing stopping me from pushing it. So this is just always what you should do. If you have a pass pawn, just push it. Check. Check. Checkmate. 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 Lucky my rook was cutting the king off. Yes, pretty lucky, actually. Also, lucky that he didn't do um, this. He, he didn't go up the board to attack my rook, and he probably should have. He went down the board, and he actually let me queen pretty easily. He actually let, let me queen pretty easily. So that was fortunate, because he should go here and attack my rook, and that, that would probably cause me to flag, because I'm pushing the pawn, but then suddenly I don't want to hang my rook, I got to move my rook, and I think I, I lose too much time there. Zero point six. Yeah, we're still in it. We're still in it. The dream is still alive for five hundred and fifty before we end today's session. I think the next. It's all up to the next game. It's all up to the next game. Mister Counter Gambit says a five hundred would hang that rook. You're talking about here. You're saying a 500 would hang that rook? 
by just pre-moving the pawn. Not my 500s. Because my 500s, when the rook gets attacked, they can't pre-move the pawn, Mr. Counter Gambit. Because there's no pre-moves. <laughs> so it's impossible. There's no way they could hang the rook by pre-moving the pawn. I already thought about that one. Alright. Um, Alright, let's get the next game. This is make or break. This is make or break, guys. This is the last one. Weird off with five gifted subs. This is the last one of the day. Because if I, if I get 550, then I'll be happy. And if I, if I miss, I said we were going to play till we lost. So game aborted. Oh, he didn't want he didn't want any of this. He didn't want any of this. Major Cloth with a gifted sub. Ambiguous Mammal. Brand new. Stas 1775. Thanks for the prime. Welcome, guys. Brand new subs. I appreciate that a lot. Um, and Weirdoc. Gifting five subs. Thanks to Weirdoc. Anyone who just got a sub, that's the guy to thank. He didn't want any of this. I see everybody following in the background, and uh, those that are clicking the follow button who are either new to the channel or have been lurking for a while decided, hey, you know what, I'm going to follow now. Um, I appreciate it either way. But yeah, it's that heart button above the screen. If this is helpful for you, entertaining for you, you like laughing at my mouse slip, whatever it is, if you're enjoying yourself, don't be afraid to click that follow button. Find out when we're, when we're streaming next, and, uh, and it's free to do. It's free to do. All right, let's get... Uh, Let's get another game. All right, Henry. Oh, no, we're playing a 600. Oh, this is unfair. <laughs> we're playing a 600. Let's see if our if our strategies work. You guys agree? Everything I've done so far, pretty normal, right? E4, E5. Knight out, knight out. We're going to get our bishop out. You know, so far, so good. This is normal stuff. This is normal. We've done this every single time so far. Following those rules. Controlling the center. Okay, he goes there. We're going to get castled. So the knight controls e4, d5. Bishop controls d5. We've seen this before. We're going to take that. And then we're going to play d3. So always go for, go for trades. Anytime there's one proposed. This is good so far. Five thousand bits from Mathrail. Okay. He says, your $50 can do the thank you map rail, 5,000 bits. So I'm being cheered on. We're trying to go to 550 ELO and we just got a $50 dono. That's more 50s in the world. That's good vibes, good vibes. He's going here. We're going to take it. We're going to take it. It's late in UK. I had my chances. Yes, that's true. The UK uh, might be a little tired right now. Let's go Rook here. You know why? I've actually had this exact position before. It was one of the first games of the stream, if you guys remember. Does anyone remember the game? Black played knight here. I took, and then he played like queen d6, and I took. It was a discovered check, but all I was doing was going for a trade. Who remembers that game? All right, he goes here, but that's a free pawn in the center. I have to take that. I have to take that pawn. 5k bits, yeah, for a toast. We got a big supportive community here. Mapreal is, is more than just a part of that. Um, been supporting for a while. Thanks a lot again, Map Rail. An issue coming in with the two-month reset. Okay, he's he's attacking our knight. Now, whether or not we believe it's hanging or not, um, just general principle, after you take something, go back. This is the great square, which you guys have seen me do time and time again. You guys have seen me do it time and time again. After, after I do this, I, I always go back and I control the two central squares. So I bring a knight in if I ever have to go back. The square it just came from is usually good enough. Okay, he's taking. Obviously, we're going to take back. Knight c6. Okay, so it's up to us. We got the bishop. Um, this looks like the square we usually put it on, covering d4. I always put my bishop on this square or this square, if I can. So one of those two. Both would be good here, by the way. Uh, let's go queen to d2 and rook d1 next. Okay, knight there. I think I'm just going to continue with this. Queen there. I'm um, going to go h3. The same stuff I've been playing. You'll notice that even sometimes when g3 is a good move, I don't play it. I usually play h3. Even in times where it's a blunder, you guys have seen me blunder a queen check down there like at least two or three times today. Okay, 95, that's, that's an exchange. We're obviously going to take that. Obviously going to take that. Okay, he takes with the rook. 
Now, um, time for a random pawn move. We have got our escape square. We've finished all of our development. Time to chuck some pawns up the board. One of these two moves next. Let's see what he wants to do here. So what's my next move going to be? It's probably going to be one of these two. He goes rook there, and I think I will. As I've always said, when, when one of your random pawn moves happens to be a central pawn, it's even better. So I'm going to play d4 here. Um, obviously, it's actually not a great move. I mean, he can put his knight in there, and this is a big weakness I just made. Okay, he goes rook g6. Um, generally, getting out of the center, not a great thing. Um, I'm going to put my bishop in this square, attacking the center, and maybe maybe I put my queen up to d3, maybe rook e3, rook uh, e1 next. These are probably, one of those two moves is going to be next, I think, for me. Depends where he goes, though. Depends where he goes. So this is actually kind of annoying. Neither of my moves work, because he can take that. And there's no way that after rook e3, queen f4, I'm playing rook e8 check, right? No chance, no chance. Um, so I think I have a few reasonable options, but I'm going to play the one that comes to mind first. I'm going to put my bishop in the center. Bishop in the center. Looks like a fine move. Queen f3, and buddy, I am probably trying to take your queen for a good 30 seconds here. My goodness, queen f3 is a heavy hitting move. A heavy hitting move. Holy cow. Buddy's really coming with the howitzers. My god, this is a strong move. This is a strong move. So, some good moves that I could try. Uh, I could go bishop here, I could go g3, um, king f1, if I just realize, hey, I can't defend that, and I have to just try to run, because I don't, I don't see any other way to defend this. So I think the most logical way is probably this. I, I, think, I think this man makes the most sense. Okay, he takes. Uh, I think taking back is very reasonable. Taking back, rook's in the middle of the board. He brings the rook there. Um, I think doubling the rooks is fair. Um, yeah, rook, rook to e1 looks good. The other move that I would consider is like both queen d3 and queen e3. Um, queen e3 unfortunately hangs my rook, and queen d3 drops this pawn, and, and after he's just played this, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to, to undefend that pawn. So I'm going to go here just because doubling the rooks in the center on an open file, always a great, great thing to do. Rook takes g3. Well, you guys know I have to, I just have to take it. We'll, we'll find out what happens next. Um, so he's, he's hitting my king. Generally speaking, um, every time I'm in check, I don't block the check. You guys have seen that. So I am going to move my king. I am going to move my king. Of course, queen g2 would be a good move. So would queen h2. But the reason I'm going to move my king is because... Um, that's what I've been doing so far. That's the habit I've sort of built up right now is that, hey, if my king's attacked, if your king's in check, the first instinct is you grab your king. You're like, where can I put it? You know, and you touch the king here, you'd only see one square and it's g1. So I think it's really normal that when you get checked at the lower elos, you, you grab your king first and you're like, okay, where can I put this to safety? Building bad habits. Well, the, the bad habit might be having no tactics. So... Don't worry, we're not building those as habits. We're just not introducing them until later. We're not introducing them until later. Okay, rook f6. Again, strong move from this guy. A strong move from this guy. Very impressive, very impressive. 
Um, I think it makes a lot of sense to give a check here. I'm trying to think of another move that I might do or that makes sense. Maybe a queen into the middle, into the center here. But uh, let's give a check just to start off. Okay, let's give another check. Hmm. Okay, so I've got my checks in. He goes king to, to g6. I don't really have a move here. I'm just going to play like a, a move in the center, I guess. Attack a pawn. Maybe I take this pawn next. Okay, so I'm going to, I think, continue to, to move my king if I get checked. Okay, um, I think I may as well check just because that's what I did last time his king was there and rook back in the center. It's a principled uh, 500 elo draw. <laughs> 500 elo draw, just a couple grandmasters playing against each other guys, what can I say? What can I say? Just a couple GMs, you know, having it out. Just a couple GMs going at it. What can I say, though? Rookie 7, check, and then Rookie 5, centralizing the Rook. Very obvious draw if you follow my rules for, for, for low elo. Very, very obvious draw. <laughs> Taking a draw up a full Rook is realistic. Did that hit a little close to home? Why not queen d3? Well, whether you like it or not, that's kind of a fork. <laughs> Force a draw. Thanks for the 29 months, Nick Richardson, for the 16 months. Fives are good, man. Peru man with 500 bits as well. Glad you're appreciating it. Cheers. So we didn't lose the game, guys. So I say we get another game. What do you guys think? One last game? Obviously, I said I was going to play until 550 or I lost. And technically, neither of those things happened. So I think I, I'm entitled to one more game, right? That's fair. Okay, okay, good, good. I'm on, we're on the same page. Unless we get another draw. Oh no, this guy's almost 700. Okay guys, this is a real test. This is a real test. <laughs> this guy's clocking some real heat here. Uh oh. Okay, E4, E5. Fundamentals, guys. Knight f3. I start with this move after e5 every single time I see it. If I see that, I always bring the other knight out. Because I've seen this opening before. He goes bishop there. You always attack the bishop. Whenever it comes up to hit your knight, he takes. You always take towards the middle. Always take towards the middle. Okay, he goes there. We're going to play bishop here because that's what we've been playing before. Every time. Oh, and we found a guy who actually took our pawn in the center. Uh-oh. This, this guy might be giving us some, some injuries here. We've got a castle ASAP. Naprosto, you're really in a, a Marvel's mood, eh, buddy? I would normally uh, definitely say yes on a Saturday, but I have, a, uh, I have a, a workout scheduled for this evening. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to host. That's the reason I'm going to be ending the stream after, well, unless I draw a thousand games in a row. But that's the main reason that we're going to be ending is... Uh, Got to get my uh, got to get my workout in. Workout or a date? A workout. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, okay, knight takes pawn. Let's put our queen, I guess, on the the I guess the most logical square. D two. Work out with Dan. That would be great, Bullet Mercenary. Dan doesn't participate in all of our workouts, but he has participated in the, in the last three or four, which has been good. 
But that is the plan after this. I, I, I got to get my Saturday night workout in. Because after playing like a 500 for so long, I have a bit of pent up testosterone that I need to get rid of. So I do need to hit the weights just for my mental health. Um, okay, he's, he's going there. I'm just going to follow the, a few more principles. I'm going to bring the rook to the middle. We have a messed up position here. We've actually lost two pawns because he came with very quick bishop takes knight. And after we didn't have a knight defending our pawn, he just straight up took it. He straight up took it. Okay, he goes here. Um, I do need to develop this bishop. So my queen is actually kind of annoying here. Um, I'm going to move my queen here so I can get my bishop and get my rook. That's Those would be the fundamentals. Ooh, and we've seen this before. So what do we do? H3 every time. H3 every time. He's going to take it again. Okay. He's going to take it again. We're going to go queen takes. Knight d4 hitting my queen. Got to make some important decisions here. Where to put my queen. Um, generally being towards the center. Like here or here is sort of what we have been doing so far. We haven't really been putting our queen out to any of these sort of aggressive squares. So I think we either come back or we go in the center. Um, I'm going to go in the center. That's what we've been following so far. Okay, this is a fork. Um, I think we better keep following. Keep following the principles. Let's finish our development. Hey, it's not going well, but uh, at least we're going to stick to the principles here. We got some peace in the center. We are getting our bishop where we want it. No taking hanging pawns. This is absolutely uh, possible, but it pretty much has the same effect as queen e4. And I think in general, sticking to the middle for now, rather than uh, taking pawns, is, is what we're trying to focus on. But, you know, taking pawns like that, you're going to be doing that a lot more. Okay, that's a trade, so we're going to take that. Going to be doing that a lot more in the, in the, next, uh, the next set of rules. Um, okay, so pawn in the middle hanging. I think we can safely take that. Can we play this Amon on sub-Sunday? Well, you know what I have planned for sub-Sunday? Uh, I'm going to outsource my sub-Sunday to the Amon bot on chess.com. So instead of me having a stream, I just take the day off and you know pour myself a nice uh, lemonade, put a little uh, umbrella in it, lay down, uh, do some sun tanning, and you guys play Amon bot on chess.com. That's the, that's the game plan. Um, OK, let's uh, keep the queen in the middle. Keep the queen in the middle for now. He goes rookie eight, and uh, unfortunately, guys, we cannot take it. This is something I've discussed before. Uh, no 400 would ever give up their queen for rooks. <laughs> it would never happen. It would never happen. So hey, you know what? That pawn on b7 is looking mighty tasty. You guys were telling me to take that pawn earlier, right? You guys are trolling. You guys told me to take this pawn. You say, hey, do we not take free pawns around here? Well, there you go. Look, it's your fault. It's your fault. I wouldn't take the pawn because of you guys. And here we are, getting mated. Back rank mated. I said it would never happen with h3, and look what you guys have done to me. Look what you guys have done. It's definitely not my fault. It's definitely not my fault. <laughs> All I can say, the rules are good. I'm good. It's, it's on you. It's on you guys. <laughs> Nardog with the fresh prime sub. I just didn't want the draw. I didn't see what draw was there. But one thing that is seriously not a move I'm going to do under these rules is I'm not going to take a rook with a queen. It's just not something that, that comes to mind. That's a bit of an advanced uh, understanding that trading a queen for two rooks more often than not will be a very good thing to do. And so we will introduce that very soon. But as you first start out chess, what you, what do you know? You know that the queen is the most valuable, most important piece, most powerful piece on the board. And so you're not going to give it away for a rook. You just aren't. Like, it's just not a move you're going to do. If the rook was in front of the queen, then of course you would take it and take a free piece. You would trade and then take a free piece. But Queen for a rook is just not something that comes to people's mind uh, this early in chess. So um, I think 
I think it's very realistic to to never make that trade when you're first starting out. Um, it'll happen though. I mean, it'll be added. It'll be added. Analyze. Yeah, we, we did lose that one, so we, we can go into the analysis. Twenty seven point five. Oof. <laughs> it's a little rough. It's a little rough. We gotta work on castling. We gotta work on an isolated deep pond, isolated pond. Man, I I gotta work on isolated deep on. That's what chess.com thinks. Chess.com sees a guy blundering a pawn, blundering another pawn, blundering another pawn, and then blundering the exchange. And chess.com's like, you should really check that isolated deep pawn there, VBKN. You could really improve your chess if you worked on that isolated deep pawn. Like, great. <laughs> Thanks a lot, chess.com. Yeah, let me just work on that Isolani. <laughs> Appreciate that, bud. Great. We're really going places. <laughs> there you go. See, zero blunders. I have zero blunders. He has one blunder. You see, guys? I have zero and he has one. Tell me who the better player is. I'm, I'm creating rules for you guys that will result in zero blunder games. You guys are, of course... No, you guys know which one his blunder was. There it is. Rook to e8. And I don't know how this is not a blunder, by the way. Oh, they count that a missed win. Ah, see guys? If you miss a win, it's not a blunder. It's a missed win. Keep that in mind. You want to play chess without blundering? Just make sure to miss the win instead. Not a blunder. Not a blunder. There we go. That's important to remember. No blunders here. No blunders here. We don't blunder out here. Neprosto, 10,000 bits. 10,000 bits from Neprosto. I'm not going to miss that dono and blunder that. Thanks for the series. It's very entertaining, says Neprosto. Looking forward to more episodes. Hope we can work on that castling. Yeah, honestly, it's been a troll, but chess.com has told me to work on castling in every single game where I've castled. And then when I don't castle, chess.com's like, all right, this guy knows what he's doing. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Neprosto, thanks for the bits. Thanks for the bits, man. The, the support today and yesterday, just in general, I mean, it... It might not need to be said again, but I'll, I'll keep reiterating that and Prosto is uh, one of the biggest channel supporters um, right now, for sure. So deserves every bit of thanks. Uh, they can get lots of gifted subs. Hopefully people are making sure to thank Neprosto for all the energy that he brings into the chat and support helps uh, keep the channel running the way it does and helps us do more series like this and stuff like that. You know, when we see that you guys are out there enjoying it, having a good time and that it's that it's appreciated and well received. That's that's nice feedback to get. So. Thanks a lot to, to Neprosto for the support. Uh, Mulgwai, thanks for the 19 months. Uh, let's just click on my profile here and see what we did today, guys. Let's see what we did today. So we were 485 when we started. So I think I think we played a little bit more than... Uh, Okay, so we got up to 485. So here we are. That was our that was our last game from last time. So not counting that one, we started right here. This game. So we started with a win. Uh, we lost because we had nine accuracy. <laughs> yeah, seems like a fair loss, you know. Nine accuracy ain't gonna get you very far in life. Our opponent was only 10.8 though, so I don't know what game was going on there. <laughs> okay, well, we were, we were battling it out, let's put it that way. Uh, then we won against someone who had 5.3 accuracy. 5.3. Wait a minute, then we had 5.3 accuracy. What? Oh my goodness. 
5.3. How, how is it? How are these numbers possible? Is what I'm wondering. Jeez. Donnie Tsunami, 10 gifted subs. Holy cow! Well, the 5.3, you guys maybe will remember that we that we won was this one. Does anyone remember this game? The reason it was 5.3 is because there were so many wins missed. It was this one. It was the one I was just trying to remind you guys of. Okay, so that, this is the guy we beat with 5.3. So he's blundering left, right, and center. Blunder. Okay, and even if his moves get check marks, that only means they're good. They're definitely not like the best. They're, they're all like good moves. Good, 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 good. Um, sorry, how did how did he get queen takes b two? Is a good move. What? Check mark. Yep. <laughs> yep. Queen b two. Yep. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Queen B2. <laughs> good move, yeah. <laughs> Way to go. Yeah, good. Good job. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, my, my man's definitely on the 420 there, Canty. What can I say? Queen B2, good move. Reinforcing bad habits. You gotta listen to my stream, guys, for the good habits. Trust. Trust. And then, what was the game where we had 5.3? I think you guys will also remember. Oh man, it was this one. Do you guys remember this game? Donnie Tsunami, thank you for the 10 gifted subs again, man. Glad you're enjoying this series. Hopefully it helps. Okay, here we play King H1. This is before we learned that Bishop uh, and Knight for two rooks is actually a good thing. Oof. I don't know how I'm getting... How am I getting low accuracy, by the way? How am I getting 5.3 for this game? This is an outrage. This is an outrage. How is this 5.3? There's no way. 5.3? Okay, so look, I, I understand that's a mistake. And that's a mistake. And that's a huge blunder. But from here, I have to be playing good moves. Look at this. Rookie one, that's not bad. Knight d5, that's pretty good. Bishop g5 is best. Okay, bishop e3 is pretty good. Okay, rookie three is reasonable. Okay, taking a pawn, I mean, taking a pawn? I save my knight from danger? I double rooks in the center? Okay, a a4 might have been, might have been int. Okay, d4 might have been int, but it's better than 5.3. That's ridiculous. I just did pretty well there, you know. A A4 might have been a bit of a troll. Uh, wow. Ethan Sapir, 10 months, tier 3. Thanks a lot, uh, Ethan. Keeping that tier 3 running. Sub Sunday privileges and more. GM Canty. Oh, man. It's nice to have Canty chilling around. I, I know this is a little bit below your pay grade there, Canty. Um, but uh, thanks for tuning in. Running a bit of a different style series for the chess bras, I'll say. But uh, thanks for being here, man. Hanging out. Hanging out. Gifting five subs as well. Shout out to GM Canty. Shout out to GM Canty. Speaking of shout out, I'm actually gonna get a shout out to GM Canty. If you guys haven't checked out Canty's stream, this guy, this guy brings the energy, man. I'm telling you, you gotta check it out. I did the shout out right there. The link's in the chat, but he streams chess on Twitch. And this guy's worth your follow. Hopefully you catch him when he's live so you can actually uh, see what I'm talking about. But... Give him a follow next time he's live. Tune in and see what he's all about. I, I promise you're going to enjoy that stream too. When can't he be streaming? You got to ask him, man. You got to ask him. But thanks for the five subs as well, can't he? Um, so those were our five accuracy ones. And then... So from there we improved though. We had a rough start. As you can see, we had a win, loss, win, loss, loss, win... Loss, but then it started to get better. Win, loss, and look what we were able to finish the day with. Look at this, guys. Some good, good progress. One, two, three, four, five, six wins in a row. We even had an 87.6 game. This was a good finish. We didn't quite meet the uh, the 550 marker, 
but we ended up with a lot of wins near the end. And I mentioned when we started the stream, it takes time to get things going, to get things going. So what it means is this is how we ended the last stream. Remember, we ended at 485. Look at all these wins near the end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of eight to end the stream last time. And look at the beginning of last stream. Tons of losses. So you see what I'm saying? Hopefully you see what I'm saying is that when you start off, you will have some losses, but it's when you start to get used to those rules, do them over and over again, you build those habits, you just start remembering them, the games are gonna go better. So it, re it really is like that. It really is like that. Oh, he's got poor connection. That's the first thing you wanna notice. Back to the habits, guys. E4, we're gonna start every game with E4 so far. So this is what we're, uh, we're gonna go with E5. Thanks, uh, Jeffrey, man. Five gifted subs to start off. Super generous of you. Bishop d6. Again, don't think that's a good move because he's blocking his other bishop in, but we're going to ignore it. Keep doing our thing here. Bishop c4. Yeah. We're not going to move the same piece twice in the opening. Not looking to break any principles so far. What we've done, e4, get our pieces out. Something like d3 and castle on the next couple moves. And there you go. He's moved the same piece twice. Already looking good for us. Castle ASAP. It's a super important rule that we uh, want to be cognizant of. Knight to f6. And let's just go d3. d6. And I think we'll just go rook here and bishop e3. You guys have seen this um, arrangement of moves from me before. Okay, bishop there. That is a... Capture, a trade. Anytime we can do a trade, you know, equal material, we're definitely going to take it. Um, we're threatening to, not threatening, but we were going to exchange there. We're going to take with a rook, not to double our pawns. Double pawns are not always bad, but we're focusing on trying to keep our pawns good where we can. Um, let's go queen d2. And basically going to bring the, uh, the pieces to the middle of the board. Okay, he's gone here. Let's uh, bring this rook over e5 and that's a capture we're going to take it and something that we've actually learned in this series so far is that this move forking us is something we want to avoid i said one of the main ways we're going to look to avoid it is we're going to put our own pawn in the center to occupy that square and not let him uh, play d4 so that's why i'm going to play d4 here learn from our previous games if you guys have been watching the series Okay, and our knight gets attacked. Now, obviously the, the pawn is pinned, but uh, our, our knight's getting attacked. It's threatened by the pawn, so we're going to move it. We're going to move it, and we're always going to look to put it in the center where possible. Can't go to d4, but actually can go pretty nicely into e5. So that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Rook takes e5 with tempo. Oh, it absolutely could have happened. But I decided to go d4 because that was a habit we built up earlier. Whenever there's like a threat of d4, we said we were going to try to go d4 ourselves and not let it happen. So absolutely could have taken that pawn, but I'm going to try to uh, try to do this. Now, he's gone here. It's a trade. So we're absolutely going to take that. And that's a free pawn in the center of the board. We'll take that as well. We'll take that as well. Now that we've got things clarified, we, we stopped that threat. We're always going to trade pieces with our opponent um, where, where possible. Now, again, rook there. I could play knight c7, trapping that rook in there. But something we've done in general is... When, uh, when the piece gets attacked in the center, we either defend it or simply move it back and attack the center again. The, the knight's still exerting pressure. One of my next moves, I do want to play this ASAP. I just feel like I haven't had time. He's been threatening me, but this is going to be one of my next moves. And there we go. He goes like that. I'm going to take the time to play h3. Very important move to uh, give my king some, some air. So I'm not going to get back rank mated at any point in this game. He moves his queen back. And now it's my turn. Um, Lots of different things I could do here. Um, rook here to put pressure on a pawn in the center makes a lot of sense. Uh, pushing a central pawn also makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of different moves I could do here, but I think maybe like doubling the rooks, putting pressure in the center makes some sense. Okay, he goes here. Um, maybe it's time for you know a few random pawn moves. Let's you know chuck the uh, chuck the pawn up to a4. Why didn't I take the rook? Well, you know, trapping a piece is sort of like a little bit of a tactic. So we're trying to play without tactics right now. We're trying to play without tactics. It's pretty representative of someone who's brand new to chess. Like, 
I'm talking if you if you just sign up for chess.com right now, you haven't watched this stream before, you haven't watched any stream, you've never touched a chess piece in your life, you're gonna have no idea what a tactic is. Like, so it's it's normal that you might play without them completely. Okay, let's push the spawn. It was being threatened in the middle, so let's go here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in tactics at a later stage. So we start, we're gonna build the fundamentals. We're gonna try to play, you know, good chess here. And later on, we'll, we'll add in tactics and hopefully it'll all come together nicely. It goes knight b4. Um, to me, this pawn is, is just waiting uh, to be captured in the middle. It's a center pawn. You know, we're conscious of all the, the pieces attacking the center. Let's take that. This video is going to be on YouTube. Yeah, you can always watch the VODs. Um, that's for sure. But yes, the, the videos will be on YouTube as well. Um, probably not in their, uh, you know, their full capacity. Um, you know, like we're not just going to upload the whole VOD, but we'll, we'll make our own video of it somehow. So, um, okay, knight takes d5 played. Now, um, knight takes d5 is capture, but at the same time, after doing this, would blunder my rook. The goal is not to make moves that um, hang pieces for free. So, Kind of a tough decision. I think it's pretty reasonable actually that I might play knight d5. Again, it's not necessarily a bad move. I have you know tactics like knight f6. We're gonna stay away from tactics right now. I see the rook looking down at my queen. I'm just gonna move my queen out of the way, get out of the uh, the attack, and still my queen's attacking the center, and I'm defending my rook. So I want to trade knights here. But I'm just gonna move my queen. Anytime like pieces are staring at your queen, you sort of want to get out of dodge. Queen takes d5 absolutely would have been a good move. You, you guys are right. Uh, he's attacking my rook. Let's just keep my rook in the center, but also get out of trouble. And he plays h5. It's a really good move. He's got uh, he's got space for his king. Let's make some more pawn moves on the other side of the board. Our king is nice and safe. There's no way we get checkmated. It's because we played h3 earlier, so I like the position here. Oh, thanks. Uh, Vitesh, yeah, I thought that was already done actually, so maybe it just didn't go through. I'll make sure to get to that after the game. Uh, let's just keep pushing pawns over here. We've done this before. Ooh, en passant would be nice, but we don't know what that is. <laughs> we don't know what that is. Okay, what else to do? Uh, let's move our queen. Still, you know, contributing to the center here. There we go. Change that title. Um, queen h7. Okay. Not too sure what's going on with that move. Um, bunch of decisions to make. Let's go here. Could be taking this pawn. I'm just going to uh, bring my rook in. Maybe start attacking pawns here. Hey, that's a trade. And what do we do now that we're in an end game? There's a few things. Number one, we want to bring our king in. Let's try that. Number two, we want to attack pawns where possible with our pieces, with our king, anything. So we're going to play rook here, attack pawns. We're bringing our king into the game. This is what we want to do. Okay, king in, active king at all times. At all times. Okay, we're looking to bring our king in some more. That's a trade. You guys know we want to trade pieces where possible. We want to take pawns where possible. I don't have many rules for the end game at the beginner level. All I say is trade everything, of course, if it's an even trade. Bring your king into the middle and attack your opponent's pawns. So bring the king in and attack your opponent's pawns. That's the idea. And if you got a pass pawn, believe me, just push it, baby. So here we go. We got a pass pawn. We're just we're just pushing it all the way. It's one of the main plans. And look, we just got a queen just like that. <laughs> that wasn't hard. It seems like at the 500 level that I'm playing at right now, um, if you just have a pass pawn and push it, that's <laughs> that's a really, uh, really effective plan. Really effective plan. Okay, we're going to check the king and be in the center of the board. Okay, we're going to check the king again. Okay, we'll keep checking the king. And again, as long as you only check only check. You have a good chance to deliver checkmate. Checks only. 
If you start not checking, you're, gonna, you're literally going to stalemate your opponent. We'll take that first win. We'll take that first win. Checks only. Check, 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 check. That's all we need to do. We just need to check. Now, queen e5 actually checked the king and won the rook. But it's not about the rook at that point. As soon as you have like a queen on the board, you're, you're just checking. <laughs> check the guy forever. Check the guy forever. Checking off your checklist. There you go. There you go. So, I mean, for first game, not too bad. Seven mistakes, four blunders. Believe me, we had a miss win, four blunders, seven mistakes. There's going to be lots of things that we can work on. Lots of things that we can work on. Um, but even, even playing this way, you know, your opponents can be playing at a similar level. Your opponents can be playing at a similar level. All right, let's get the next game. We won, so obviously we're not going to study it. We already know what we're doing. We're geniuses. We're 549. One more win, we're over 25. Or 25. 25. Yeah. One more win, we're over 2550. AKA 550. All right, queen h5. Now, again, when there's knight f3, we go knight c6. When there's knight c3, we go knight f6. Have we seen this move before? Definitely not. Is it very logical to blunder? Yes, it is. <laughs> queen h5. The best move would be knight there. But after queen h5, I go knight f6. I'm just, that's a normal move for me to play. He goes there. Okay, whatever, dude. Whatever, dude. I don't know what he's up to right now, but I'm just playing my normal, normal setup. The exact same thing as last game. The exact same thing as last game. I'm going to castle. I'm going to put this pawn up. And uh, you guys can maybe notice here that I'm not doing anything too strange. Okay, I'm going to put my bishop there. Okay, that's a trade for me. And if I see a bishop there, I'm going to play uh, h6. This is, this is normal here. Let's take it. Um, and I'm going to have my pawns doubled. So this is not a good thing but it was kind of forced by the position. It's not something I want, but it's something that's forced. Okay, he goes f3. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to bring my rook to the middle. You get this all the time? Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that a lot of positions that I get are going to be fairly relatable. Um, let's go for some random pawn moves over here. Random pawn move time. Okay, now I've, I've got all my pieces to the middle. You know, I've made my pawn moves on the... Uh, on the queen side, developed all my pieces. The queens are actually traded off the board. Um, knight d4 looks very reasonable. It's a, it's a piece in the middle of the board. Okay, and that's a fair trade. That's a fair trade. Okay, knight d5. So he's actually doing the same thing. He's getting his piece in the center, and he's actually got a threat here. He's threatening this, and he's threatening this. Both pawns look, I mean... Pretty important to defend. Unclear which one uh, black defends, but you know, rook e6 is sort of a move in the middle of the board, guards this pawn. That looks reasonable. King g7 also looks reasonable, but hey, we'll play this one. We'll protect this c pawn. We'll protect this c pawn. Okay, he takes this. We lose a pawn with check, and surprisingly, we lose a piece as well. Well, we lose the exchange, mostly because you know, a fork is unbeknownst to us. Unbeknownst to us. Forks are tricky. We're going to learn forks at the next level. But for now, no forks. Okay, we get attacked. We, we move back. We go back. And, I mean, now that we're sort of in an endgame, What's our goal? What's our goal? We want to bring our king and activate ASAP. ASAP. So I want to bring this king in the middle of the board. I want to start attacking his pawns with my king. This is all I want to do. Uh-huh. Now, this could be good. This could be bad. But point is, I'm just bringing my king up the board and trying to make threats. You know, I've got my rook uh, hitting the middle. Again, bishop there. Fork. A tough move to see. A tough move to see. Let's make a, a move in the middle of the board with my rook. Wow. 
following those habits, we're going to try to control the center squares where possible. The rook and bishop doing a good job. Um, I don't really have a plan here, but I might try to keep running my king in. Because what did I say in end games? What you want to do all the time is be very, very active with your king. Okay, so again, I'm just taking pawns when I'm in an end game. And what's my plan going to be now, guys? I have a pawn. I'm just going to push it. That's, that's, all, that's all I'm going to be doing. Push my pass pawn. Whenever you get a pass pawn, just push it. And you guys have seen that time and time again in, in this series. That's all I'm really doing. If I can get a pass pawn, I'm just going to push it because it's really easy moves to do. And we saw in the last game, I pushed my pawn. The guy didn't even like pay attention. The guy didn't even pay attention. Okay, he goes here. That's an exchange. We're going to take it. He takes back. We have to move our bishop. Let's give him a check, let's say. We got him move our bishop. It's being attacked here. Got to react to that. Okay, king up. Push him. Push him, baby. H3. Push him, baby. H2. Checks me. Got to move our king. Let's go here. Free piece? Is that something free? Hello? Is that in the rules? Hello? We take free things? That's right. Yes, we do. We take free pieces. And we queen pass pawns. There we go. You know, the rule set's not looking too bad now. Check. Got to try to check him, check him, check him, check him. Let's check, 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 check. Let's take that scary, scary pass pawn. Oh, that's a trade. We're going to take that. Okay, now, queen in the center. Oh, thank you. Queen in the center. We use our bishop. Check. Let's bring the bishop in the middle of the board. Queen and bishop. We want to take care of his remaining pawns and then go for checkmate. No music? There should be music. Just at a pretty low volume. Okay, we'll take that. Um, give a check. Now, it's pretty hard to checkmate the king. Adjust your queen. So you're going to need your king as well. But we want to give checks and we want to give mate. So now that we're, we're close to mate, we want to try to check him all the time. We're climbing. We are. We're getting mates. Look at that. We're getting mates. Look at that. Oh, we've had some stalemates before, guys. Believe me, I don't always get the mates in. We've had some stalemates. And we're climbing. But, you know, uh, what I'm saying is uh, you don't have to play a perfect game. And at 400 ELO, you're not going to. You know, all I'm saying is you get the pieces to the middle. You want to trade where possible. You're going to kick this bishop out. And obviously this didn't start well for us, but seriously, this will like raise your elo by default. It, in this position, there's so many moves that you could play as black that people might consider. Rook moves, pawn moves over here, bishop check and bishop there. But what I am saying is that if you literally just bring your king up, the king is an attacking piece in the end game and nobody under like 600 elo knows how to use it. So if you start bringing your king up, you should, yeah, that will make you a better player in the end game for sure at this level. For sure. So we're at 557 and we're going on for the next one. Okay, we're playing bear chest 96 and we are over 550. So there we go. Small celebration. Yay. Only bring your king up when there's no queens. That's correct. Okay, so he's going there. We're just going to bring our knights out exact same way that we have been. So basically whatever pawn he puts in the center, I copy it. I bring two knights out. I'll bring one bishop out first. Then I'll you know play this pawn up. I'll bring the other bishop out. I'm looking to castle ASAP. You don't know when it's considered an endgame? It can be tough to know the exact answer, like when is it an endgame? No queens is a really good indicator. So no queens on the board. That's that's already a good place to start. And then, you know, if the total material count 
for one side is, you know, let's say less than, <laughs> I don't know, less than 12. I just picked that random number. You know, a rook in two minor pieces would be like five plus six. That's 11 points. I call that an end game. Maybe more than 12 is not. So there you go. I've just picked a random number. We'll work with it. Okay, bishop g5, h6. Whenever there's a bishop there, kick it out straight away. Kick it out straight away. Okay, anytime that uh, gets taken, we always look to take back with pieces, not to ruin our pawns where possible. Okay, and what's our next plan? We want to castle ASAP. The only reason we didn't do that is whenever we see bishop there, we always want to kick it out. We do. And I did order some food, so I have some... Uh, I have some sustenance. Bishop d3. Hey, that's a trade. We're going to take that and we're going to get castled. We're going to get castled. Castled, nice and safe. And what are our next moves, guys? We want to bring the rooks to the middle, of course, completing development. We already have our escape square for our king. Otherwise, we would have to, to make one very soon. Okay, rooks to the middle. This is the first rook move I'm going to play every time. Okay, that's an exchange. I'm going to take that. That's by force. Every time that there's a pawn to take, you know, we, we take it. There we go. There's another one. We take, 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 take. Free knight. But remember, when you're at this elo, if something happens, you're going to react to it. You're a very reactive player. You haven't quite developed the tendencies of... Hey, I'm going to do my own plan. If you do something to me, I'm going to react to it. So if there's a free piece over here, but you know, I have a knight here and I get attacked. I'm not going to be able to evaluate. Oh, but I take you and you take me. All I'm going to see is, Hey, my piece is attacked and you just made that move. So I got to move my piece back, you know? So it's a very reactive game. When we see H4, oh, he's threatening to, to take me. I'm going to take him. Now I'm going to look and see there's a free piece. So now I'm going to take a free piece. We're definitely going to take that. But at this, at this rating, you're just starting out, you're very reactive. It's hard to come up with your own ideas about what to do because you're just starting out. So when your opponent does something, you're going to view that as very threatening and generally react to it. So we're going to work on that. Obviously, we don't want to be reacting forever. We want to come up with our own stuff, but it's very normal to play reactive chess when you're first starting out. Okay, our queen gets attacked. I think we're just going to go right back where we came from. We know that's a safe square. We know that's a safe square. Well, let me tell you something. We know that that's a safe square, and we know that that's not a safe square. <laughs> Listen, if this guy wants to cycle free pieces on f3, f6, I mean, look, I'm here all day. I'm here all day if you want to do business. We only have one move here, so whenever you're in check, you click the king. You see wherever there are dots on the board, that's going to be the available squares. So king e7 is just forced. I have to do it. I have to do it. So that's the move. And he takes my pawn here. Now, again, if I'm completing development, I'm going to go rook d8. <laughs> fundamentals, guys. Hey, my king might be in the middle of absolutely nowhere, but hey, I'm going to complete those fundamental developing moves. Let's go. Rook d8. <laughs> rook h7. All right. Don't know what buddy's up to, but uh, yep. Let's uh, go for the random pawn move. Random pawn move. Well, I'm probably not going to have to practice castling in this game. Okay. The, the random pawns are, are strong here. That's right, Jacko. Don't underestimate the random pawn moves. I'm gaining space. This looks good. E4. That's a free pawn, right? That's a free pawn. Do we take it? Would you guys take with the queen or the pawn here? I would take with the queen. Why? Because it's check. Random pawn move. Yep. Check. King moves. More random pawn moves. And we get KO'd. We get KO'd. We got a little greedy. 
we got a little greedy. He had he only only one idea in the whole position. And it was queen takes f7 mate. Those are going to happen. Those are going to happen. You're not going to play perfect game every time. Hey, e4 was actually a relatively crafty move. After queen takes, king f1. Queen f7, he set up a mate threat. What we should have done, and what we're generally going to learn to do, is if our king's in the middle, <laughs> we're going to fix that ASAP. So, king in the middle, more likely to get mated, riskier. Um, king on e7. If we just run away to the safest side of the board, ASAP, probably going to be a good idea. Probably going to be a good idea. The e4 pawn was so tasty. I mean, we're going to take that 10 times out of 10, though. Um, the issue is that the king is in the middle. And the longer our king is there, our king was there for like five, six moves, the more likely it is to get in trouble. So when your king's in the middle, you're going to want to you're going to want to move it to safety ASAP. So main tactic, run away. Queens are on the board. We run away. Queens are not on the board. We, we run towards the action. We, we run towards the action. Thanks, uh, Red Hot Mexican, for the prime. Uh, Almond Joker and Lorcan. Cheers. So that's the idea. Random pawn moves. Still the right idea. But we can't do that when our king is sitting in the middle. We're going to lose the game. Yeah, dude's feeling a lot better about both of those knights. He's like, damn, okay, I still got it. I still got it. So let's go for the analysis. We took an L there, and it'll also give me time to access my food. Let's see here. So how did it go? Report. You know, 47.5. We'll take it. We'll take it. Not the worst. Not the worst. Lesson learned, shuffle the dad bod. Yeah, got to learn that straight away in chess. Straight away. Okay. And, and, you know, we played like a decently accurate game just following these rules. G4, rook E8, G5, takes. And I mean, look how many times that knight is hanging, guys. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, at the five six hundred level, like I even missed a free piece. I think the first time you played G four, but I I actually missed it. Like I straight up missed it. The other times after that, I really wasn't playing it because I was reacting to his moves. But when he plays H four and G five, I'm definitely taking two times. So whenever he does something that threatens something in your position, you always want to react to it, take it. But straight up hanging stuff like this, take that. And how are we going to improve for next time? Probably in this position, I would already play this move. This is the idea. We're just going to like run our king away. As soon as we're stuck in the middle, let's fix that right away. King there, king there, king there. And then maybe I start to push these pawns. Or once I go here, maybe I need to play a6 and get an escape square for my king. There you go. A nice good habit. A nice good habit. Boom. B5. <laughs> Double question mark. Rip. Okay, we start with e4. You guys know the drill. You guys know the drill. Knight next. We start every game like this. We pretty much follow up every game like this, unless it's Scandinavian or something. Let's go knight here. Uh, you know what we could do is we could do this because we want to do the knight g5 thing. Um, but we always play this, so I'm going to stick to it. I'm going to stick to it. Uh, Bishop c4 is going to be next. Uh, Grams, thanks for the five gifted subs. Thank you, man. Grams. Uh, knight there, that's going to be an immediate capture. That'll be an immediate capture. And... Uh, I would say knight d5, probably I would play instead of knight, uh, knight e2, but, you know, I just ate macaroni with my hands, so we're getting a few rolls. Knight there, probably a, a pawn that I should defend, but castle ASAP, castle ASAP, okay, castles, I'm going to go d3, um, get some my other piece, some, some action, some open action, bishop f4 is the next idea, and... I think if he leaves his pawn hanging, I will I will take it next turn. 
I'm just going to defend my own pawn and allow my pieces to get developed. Openings can be very tricky. Absolutely. Okay, let's play knight takes. Yeah, well, when the bishop went here, we should have played a3 when the knight was there. But now that the bishop's just sitting there, we don't really play a3. Um, more Usually c3 happens. Like, for example, if somehow this pawn gets here and I don't have my knight out and they give you check, you want to play c3 most of the time. You want to play c3 most of the time. So we'll go back. But hey, if it's move three and you're playing bishop c4, I'm not really going to get on your case. I'm not really going to get on your case. Developing moves are always good. Trades all the time. And how about our bishop on that main square? Okay, and there we go. We're going to follow that. And hey, great move by our opponent, bishop h5. We're not interested in playing g4 in general. Um, we see this bishop here. We're going to kick it away so that we can use the e1 square for the rook. So we're going to play c3. And c3 is not a strange move because we've actually seen it. Uh, we've actually seen it before in a lot of our games. We're going to play rook e1. Uh, most of the time when the bishop is there and uh, there's no knight in front of it, we play c3 and not a3 just because it kills the whole diagonal. So he goes rook here. Um, let's bring our queen out and bring our rook over. So we followed, uh, you know, the pretty much the same plan. F5 played. We're going to get our rook over. Okay. Brings the bishop back. Um, could be threatening something. Let's do our random pawn move. Could be trying to, like, meet me or something. But no, he plays F4. Move that he could have done last time. And it's simply going to be my bishop in. Not a tactic that I'm really going to see. Um, I can't take it or I'm going to lose my queen. So at this point, we're just going to continue by uh, playing some pawn moves in the center. Uh, let's say this one makes some sense, attacking the queen, and then I might go here next. So just trying to keep it simple. Again, this looks like a game I'm favored to lose because I, I will lose uh, material there. But my c4 move, attacking his queen, is definitely going to throw him off here. So again, in the past, whenever I make a move that threatens something and they do something to me, what are we doing? We're doing reactive chess. Reactive chess means if something just happened, we're more likely to play this move. Um, and who knows? Sometimes it might be a good move. Sometimes it might be a bad move. For example, here, again, we're going to react and we're going to take this. Okay, we're going to take that. And somehow this actually like worked out for me. I don't know how that happened. But, okay, we, we're taking here and we're, we're happy all of a sudden. We're happy all of a sudden. Okay, it's the end game now. We want to focus on a couple things. King into the middle and attack opponent's pawns. That's the idea. Okay, king in the middle. Yeah, low rated players definitely uh, definitely need more guidelines, more general rules. When you're lower rated, you want more general concepts to follow. As you get higher rated, you want those to be more and more specific. Like when you're lower rated, you want a concept like, hey, always develop your knights before your bishops. And then, you know, as as the the rating gets higher, that might slowly develop into, uh, hey, develop your knights before bishops um, when this opening happens. And then at the very highest level, it's like develop knights before bishops is never something you think about actively. You just play whatever the theory is or what your instincts are, and you're past that. But at the back of your mind, you always have that fundamental, like, you know, generally knight is better than bishop uh, to develop first, but you're always going to look to create an exception for that rule depending on uh, what the position is. So, yeah, you want general rules to start off, and then 
you'll find that those rules just get broken later on. Exactly. You learn the rules and then you learn the exceptions. So that's why we're starting off with like, you know, no tactics because it's too specific if I'm trying to explain to someone at the beginning, let's say, oh, so this is a, you know, this is a fork. It's like, oh, but you're actually not supposed to do that fork because it's pinned. And if you do that fork, you lose your queen. But you shouldn't, you shouldn't actually do that fork. And then you should do this pin, but not here because of the knight takes. And it's just like, you guys like, what are you talking about, dude? It's like, no tactics, focus on the fundamentals first. Control the center, get your pieces developed. Um, I'm going to try to use my rooks here. And like I said, attack pawns and king to the middle. That's our general plan in endgames. So I'm trying to take an approach where there shouldn't be any moves that that need explanation in terms of you know it being an exception. Okay, it goes bishop down, and we're gonna follow our own rules. Attack pawns, king to the middle. King is an aggressive piece in the end game. Okay, so the goal is to take on e6. Rook e7 attacks a pawn, but it's a little more clear that, you know, we want to take pawns so that we can make pass pawns. That's, that's generally the goal. If you have a pass pawn, push, 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 push. And, okay, we're going to take a pawn here. So some combination of bringing the king up as well as, hey, if you got a pass pawn, how many times have we said this? Push it. That's it. You'd be surprised. But, oh, that's a free piece for us. we got to take freebies. Okay, we get checked. We're going to keep going to the middle. Um, but every time I push a pass pawn in an endgame, it's usually super effective. You'd be surprised. Just pushing a pawn, somehow your opponent can't handle it. Push, 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 push. Okay, you take towards the center. <laughs> keep following the rules even at the end. Take towards the center. Rook there. Let's take more pawns, more pass pawns. Oh, he's threatening our pawn, but we'll take here. Bring the king up. Your technique is never going to be perfect, but you know you follow you follow the ideas of pass pawns and pushing them. You'll you'll win your games. You'll win your games. Let's go here. It's uh, protected. Oh, and we'll take uh, free pieces. We'll take free pieces. There we go. Not a bad win. Not a bad win. And again, uh, I explained earlier, but the reason I'm playing like sort of fast is because I spend a lot of my time sort of talking, explaining, and uh, I know these moves are not going to be instant for anyone at this level to play. But um, if I take time to find the moves as well, then I usually just flag. And um, yeah, I think that was a. A fair game, fair game. We just trade trade everything when we can. He actually got us with a tactic, but because we attacked the queen, it ended up backfiring on him on him, and he went he went crazy with this. Rook takes e3, and we ended up winning. We ended up winning. So we'll take it. Okay. 587, is that it? That's a big Big rating, d4, we're gonna match it with d5. We're gonna match it with d5. He uses this knight, we're gonna use this knight, the opposite knight. To follow that rule, we always wanna get one pawn in the center to control it, whichever pawn we can. Uh, it depends on his first move. And then we got two knights out usually, we bring our bishop. Let me go for this setup. Okay, controlling the center. Pawn here next. If he offers us a trade, you guys know if it's a trade, we're going to take it easily. Okay, e6. And not sure what he's doing, but it doesn't. Ooh, that's a free piece, guys. You know it. You know it. I'm not going to say no to a free piece. That is part of our rules. 
part of our rules. So the most important thing at this level to learn is probably, um, you know, the first, let's say the first four rules, I think are super, super important. You have to know, you have to know how the pieces move and how they capture, you just must. And by knowing how the pieces move, you're always gonna see free pieces. You know, you click on your piece, you can see these dots, they tell you where it can move to. Still very, uh, still very helpful. There's only dots appearing on squares that are legal. Okay, so he goes here, he's attacking my bishop, I'm gonna move right back to controlling the center, nice safe square. Nice safe square. Damn, Kilimanjaro, 67 months in a row. This guy's been here, sub, supporting, following for more than five and a half years. Wow. Okay, pawn there. Now, what did I do last time? Usually when a knight goes here, I don't kick it out right away, but I kick it out on the next turn at least. Holy smoke, 67. Okay, well, we're gonna take uh, the knight. That's, that's clear. Um, if we have a piece to take, we're going to do so. Okay. Uh, things to take. Once again, I'm going to be reactive. If I see this, I'm not even going to think about this. All I'm thinking about is what's happening in the middle. I'm going to take that. Why? Because I'm going to count the, the pieces that are attacking and defending. This knight is the only one defending, and I have a knight and a bishop. Two to one, that's an easy take for me. Okay, bishop there, and again, I'm going to react to this move, I'm not thinking about anything else. That move hits my queen, I'm looking to take that. Get rid of this. Backwards knight's move, knight moves are not the easiest to spot, they aren't, but when we see a trade, we're going to react to it, and we're going to take it at all times. We're going to take it at all times. Okay, queen to e2. Now, to me, you know, pins, whatever, that's that's uh, that's advanced stuff. I see this knight is being attacked, and I need to save it. You know, so if I click that knight and I look at the squares it can go to, none of them look safe except this one. So, knight h7, I think it's a totally reasonable move here. Knight takes d4, another uh, very fine move. But with the knight hanging here, uh, or the pawn attacking it, I think that... Knight h7 is the most reasonable because it it does save the piece. It does save it. Because remember, we don't want to lose pieces for free. And it's very possible that I would look at this, you know, forget that I just made an exchange and say, look, he's attacking my piece. I gotta gotta get out of there. Okay, knight's being attacked. Always want to go in the center when you're being attacked. I might try to take this for a while. It is illegal. Can't do so. Knight needs to move. E5 is covered, so d4 looks like you know, the central square that we can move to. Okay, queen to h5. Very aggressive move by him. There's lots of things hanging in this position, but um, the, the entire game is a little bit weird. You know, we got this queen here. We want to get rid of it. ASAP. Uh, this is a fork. Probably not going to go for that. Um, taking a pawn in the center makes a lot of sense. Completing development is also on the horizon, like just bishop here. Just bishop here, right? Because then we want to get castled. So I think I'm just going to go go like this. You know, there's, there's pawns hanging left, right, and center. But one thing to remember is that when you've already like taken a lot of things, when you're already up, focus on the fundamentals. Just get developed, get castled. You don't have to be greedy. You don't have to be greedy. Okay, takes here. Um, I suppose we got to take it back. Yeah, I think in general, if I can castle king side and queen side, I will always choose king side. I will always choose king side. King side is the, the safer way. Um, for people to start out. 
um, castling. So I think I'll always try to go kingside. And he resigns. He doesn't even let me take that queen. He doesn't even let me take that queen. But I would have done so. That's the free piece. We got to take it. We got to take it. So we, we get the win there. We're 565 rated. We've taken an L today. We're off to a decent start. We got Kilimanjaro and some chat energy. We're trying to push for 600. We're trying to push for 600. Speaking of a 600, here's one. Jesse, 2134. We're going to start with our usual. And you guys should really be getting the hang of it. Like, uh, the, the moves that I'm playing are, are not ones that, that you guys can't find, right? They're not ones that you can't find. Knight f3, I always start like this. Knight there. We're going to go knight here. Always uh, use the knights to control the center. These are the two main squares that knights should go to almost every game. Okay, bishop to c4. B6, we're going to make sure to castle ASAP. That's a trade. We're going to take that. Trades are nice. We're going to go D3. Okay. Rook over. And how many times have we seen this? This is the usual stuff. That is an exchange. We'll take that immediately. And if we go bishop E3... This is something we've actually noticed before, that if bishop e3, we have seen this d4 forks our pieces. So that's definitely you know a teachable moment we've had in the past. We're not going to be blundering bishop e3. So we've got my rook and knight here, free pawn in the center. That's the vibe. Always want to be looking at the center. That's where all your pieces should be attacking anyway. Where you can, you put your pieces in the, in the middle. So we're going to take that pawn on e5. If you count the defenders and the attackers, it's 1-2 against 1. That should be good for us. Okay, now, here, he attacks this, this knight. What do we do? Well, we just took here. Tommy, thank you for the 10 subs. Stacy with 5. Wow. What's going on, guys? A lot of support right now. Jeez. Very, very, uh, very, very generous, guys. Um, takes d4. What just happened there? A trade was on the board. And then if you have to move your knight, you're going to choose. You're going to choose between central squares where possible. Could I go to d5? No. So I chose e4. That's why I chose e4. Bishop d6, that's a trade. That's a trade. So we're going to take it immediately. Okay, the queen takes. Now, these are my normal squares that I developed the bishop to. In general, you guys have noticed from this series so far, I've never developed my bishops out this far. Now, of course, bishop g5 would be a fantastic move here. But... Uh, I really have I've been quite reserved with my bishop moves. And that's because when the bishop goes out here, players are often tempted to trade bishop for knight. And I've been trying to avoid that with this whole series. So I'm playing bishop here, playing queen here, looking to bring the rook over. And something like h3 next. So I've got all my development completed this way. And that's going to help a lot. So h3 is going to be my next move. H3 is going to be my next move. We've talked about this before. As tempting as it might be to do queen for two rooks, let's be, let's be clear. Nobody who's starting out in chess wants to give up their queen for anything. For anything. There's no, why would you ever want to do that? So let's move our queen. There's no way you'd ever give your queen up. Even if it's two rooks, it doesn't matter. Okay, that's a trade. But this is also a trade. There's so many things to trade here. Okay, we'll start with this because that was his last move. Queen for three pieces? Definitely not. Queen for nothing. Queen for queen. What? Siri think I'm calling her queen or something? Think I'm call She's responding to queen? That's uh, interesting programming by uh, our buddies at Apple. Um, okay, we, we did all our trades and... We're going to make our escape square. We've been doing this every single game. We want to make sure we don't get back rank mated. But yeah, I think when you're starting out, you don't want to trade your queen for anything. So it's pretty normal to look to avoid those. Okay, queen e6. Uh, random pawn move time, I think. Look at... <laughs> it's actually pretty funny timing. He's actually attacking it anyway. 
he was attacking it anyway. But yeah, I would play these moves regardless. You know, start to push some pawns over here, maybe b3. It depends what he does. But we've got our escape square. We're starting to push pawns over here. Hey, that's a trade. And guys, how do we play the end game? You want to get your king in ASAP. Now it's an end game. Why are we thinking? King f1. Bring our king to the middle where possible. Uh, we've always done trades in the past. This is just, uh, this is exactly what we want to be doing. So let's go rook here. King to the middle. Okay, he's attacking our pawn. It makes a lot of sense to do this, but for argument's sake, let's bring the king to the middle. Okay, king to the middle. We're going to take. We're going to take and we're going to attack our opponent's pawns. Attack, attack, attack. Okay. He's attacking our king. Um, check. So we're going to stay controlling center squares, but uh, still using our king. King d5, king c6 would have absolutely been a good uh, aggressive, aggressive move. Okay, that's a trade. We're going to take it. Um, yeah, if anyone did king d5, king c6, I would say that's also a really, really good idea. Really, really good idea. Okay, so we're taking pawn, and again, we want to use our king, uh, be very aggressive, uh, play in the center, and use our rook to attack pawn. So like rook here comes to mind, just using our king comes to mind. We're attacking this pawn. You really want to just like run your king around a lot in the end game. It, it's, it's really like uh, really effective. Let's try to go over here and take this pawn. Like, just look at my king. It's it's doing everything here. I'm just running around, trying to take, yeah, pretty much every pawn. Now that we have a pass pawn, hey, let's push him. Push him, baby. Okay, he attacks my rook. He attacks my rook. We're going to have to move. Just go back. King up the board. Pawns. Let's uh, check that with my king. Push him, baby. Exactly. That's what we do. Okay, let's take more pawns. My opponent's learning the lesson too. Yes, he's starting to use his rook to take the pawn. It's good. And of course, this endgame has not been played perfectly by you know, anybody involved, but um, the the ideas are the ideas are still the same. The ideas are still the same. We want to push this pawn as much as we can and uh, try to make a queen. Pushing past pawns is a really, really effective strategy. Really effective strategy. That's all we want to do. Oh, and he forgot about something. That rook is now free. We take free pieces. We take free pieces. Okay, we're gonna push the pawn. Push him, baby. We do take those. We do. We do take those. Check. We can't say we don't take those because we do. We do. We make a queen with check. Anytime you make a queen. And now when we're when we're trying to checkmate him, we're gonna make sure to try to check him on every move. That's important. Gotta try to check him on every move. And it's not gonna be perfect. It's not gonna be perfect, but you gotta try to check the king to avoid stalemate. I just think when you're starting out, try to check. Um, if you have two pieces, if it was queen and king, I would need to use my, um, I would need to use my king to to get in there as well. But I think it's a, it's kind of useful habit to try to just check, 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 check. Random checks. Yes, we're gonna, we're gonna. Uh, Take the pawn away from the king, absolutely. 
you know, you, you always take the pawn away. Because, it, oh, terrible. Because you if the pawn's on the board, your opponent can still win. So it's, the, it's normal to, to clean up all the pawns from your opponent before, before you go for the mate. Take everything from them. Hey guys, just a reminder that Building Habits is going to be a regular series on our YouTube channel. So make sure to get subscribed if you are not already. Drop a comment down below for the algorithm and let me know what you thought about the video. See you next time.